Welcome to floss tube number three. Um, on the tail end of mania, my name's Naomi. I'm Bell Stitches Pirates, which is an amalgamation of my husband's love of Disney and pirates in particular, and my love of Beauty and the Beast. Uh, gonna do this in different sections. Um, in terms of, I'm going to record willy-nilly and then piece it together. So there may be some funny starts and stops. Uh, we'll see. I'm trying something new. Instead of organizing it all beforehand, just making a pile and talking about things as they come up. Um, I have Projects I've worked on over the last roughly two weeks um, for Mania. I have some vague plans for June. A um, little bit of life humor, a little bit of haul, and I've also made a handful of um, bags and project bags and so I'm going to show off those. Um, trying a new lighting setup. We'll see how well it works. Uh, I've basically taken over the back room which is mostly my husband's room um, slash guest room. But it means I've invaded the space and then I'll have to take everything back out. So we'll see how this goes. But it seems to have a little less of the noise pollution from the lovely stop sign invaders outside. I did some work on Pirates Retreat, uh, and I did that around the 10th, which is a couple days before I filmed last time, but we have, basically I'm slowly but surely going to be taking and using up all these threads. Um, there's so much confetti in the parrot and then this is a color section and this is a color section that I get really tired of dealing with the threads so now I'm switching over, back over to more of a cross-country effect. Um, when I first started doing this piece I was stitching on the diagonal um, and I was also testing out a lot of different techniques for starting and stopping threads because I was only using a single strand and it's on, over one thread. So to, you know, for somebody who is used to doing two strands, I couldn't do a loop start. Um, I didn't want to have to constantly flip it around back and front on, especially on my lap frame, which meant that I had to figure out a different way to start. Uh, so I watched videos and heard about uh, pin starts and one stranded loop starts and tested them all out. Um, then when I stitch over two, I tend to do a, a pin stitch finish to end the threads. Can't do that over one, so then I had to figure out how I was going to finish the threads. Um, and I pretty much settled on a pins, single strand pin start for the starting. Um, and then a waist thread for the finish. Um, and it, if I'm not going to 
you know, like if I'm filling in a, a little confetti pee bit where I finish um, and it's all stitched around that, that single stitch, I'll flip it over at that point and run it through a few threads um, to secure it down. But overall, I'm completing each strand. Um, so it's either I finish the strand or I uh, run out of stitches in a reasonable area, you know, reasonable distance, or they're outside of my frame. So moving, you know, working on that a bit. Uh, on Mania, I had started a whole bunch of pieces last year. And for any piece that I had started, I was going to work on it the date that I started it. On the 13th, I got a finish. So this piece I had selected in part because um, Hamilton was doing a sit down, which is where they stay at a theater for a really long time um, at that point. Or no, they probably just closed following their sit down because this was last May. We were all in COVID shutdown. Um, anyway, this is a, a quote inspired or based off of Hamilton. And Hamilton was at one of our local theaters for a little over a year before COVID closed it early. And last year I had gotten pick, I think just the U. And um, the other kind of inspiration for picking this piece last year was, aside from its connection to Hamilton, was that my nephew struggles with writing. Um, we're, you know, constantly trying to figure out ways to help him with his writing. But there are times when I say nearly this phrase, you know, he'll, he's very good at telling you what he wants to write, but getting it on paper, even with the aids of speech to text and other such devices um, or assistance, he struggles with the writing process. And there are times when I literally am like, Dude, you just have to sit down and start writing. Um, so I thought of him. He's going into high school, so the writing is only going to get more intense, more frequent. Um, and, you know, it's simple, but it's very profound. You You don't get anywhere until you start. Um, so anyway, I got that far last year, pick you. And then this, this mania, I finished all the lettering and was pretty much to the last color in the feather. I had the ink bottle done and most of the feather done and it was like 11.30 at night and I'm like, I'm close, I'm just gonna finish it. So I finished it. Now I just have to figure out if I'm gonna frame it or if I'm going to do something else with it. I'll probably frame it, but you know, figure out how I'm gonna finish it, cut it out and mount it and then give it to him in time for high school. So that's, one of my finishes. So, May 14th, I had a piece from last year and I just finished 
I I done most of the gray. I, I so this year I finished this little section of the gray and started adding in the lavender. Um, you know, another piece that a couple days out of the year, I'll put some work into it. Uh, it'll take me forever, but it's a fun, oh, I started that, you know, I, I worked on that and made most of, most of my mania pieces, I think are going to be that way where they're fun little, they're fun pieces that I like, but I have no massive deadlines to finish them on. Um, and so for, for those pieces, they may only ever come out in May. Um, or, you know, I'll get a bee in my bonnet and decide that I really must finish them. And so I'll sit down and finish them in a couple weeks. On the 15th, I had a, a piece I've seen a decent number of other people do. And I need to, I need to add fabric to the edge of this badly. <laughs> uh, it's probably not going in the bag until I do that because I have pre-cut strips of fabric. I just need to stitch them on here. So the Christmas Village Ornaments by Dimensions. It's a kit that's been around for a good long while. I picked it up, I think, in the clearance aisle at like Michael's or something. But I had just some of, basically the, the blues, but not even all of the blue. I had, uh, and I'll have put a picture in here but I had just the basic top stitched last year. Um, I spent the bulk of the, the stitching day last year dividing the fabric and marking out all my grid lines um, and my numbering my pieces. So the red line denotes that it's um, a cut a cut space. Um, so once I have them all stitched, then I'll follow those red lines to cut them, to cut the pieces apart, serge those edges so they're nice and, and good. Um, and or trim it down further depending on there's finishing instructions on this. Um, but in the meantime for stitching, I did the red line to denote the cut point and then there's oh no, I, can't, I think it's showing up so i did a a red mark to show the center of each of those sixths and then to keep track of which piece i was stitching on at at what time um i wrote a number in the top corner so i'm actually doing the sec their their number two ornament right now um this is the section that's marked number two, which was very useful. It was, you know, I hadn't necessarily put a lot of thought into what happens if I don't pick this up for another year. How am I going to know which piece I was stitching on? I didn't put that kind of thought into it last year when I was setting this up. I just am used to identifying things. And so I identified which square was for which, which one. And then this, this year, I honestly probably would have thought it was house number one, cause it would have made more sense for me to start with house number one. But because I didn't put my extra fabric on the edges to make it easier to hold in the frame, in my Q-snap, I seriously started in the middle of the middle, <laughs> which meant I either was starting on number two or number five and uh, wouldn't have had a clue which one it was supposed to be, except that I had written it down in the corners that this belongs to this 
number. And when I pulled it out, it was like, oh, which one did I do? Oh, hang on. It says right there in the corner. I did number two. Then on the 16th, so on the 16th, I had nothing from last year, so I did a new start. And it's the Fairy Tale Sampler by Dragon Dreams. And this is my start. I was kind of hoping I'd get the whole little band across, but uh, this first band is actually pretty intensive. It's the castle and the clouds uh, with mountain. And some of the other bands on this are just a little, you know, swirly set of, you know, specialty embroidery stitches or uh, a sword and some jewels, crowns and stuff like that. So it's definitely did not get where, where I wanted, but it's also a fairly small piece. So that's the top of the final cloud. And then the mountain comes, so it maybe comes over to there. I actually could probably flip the frame and have the entire piece in my eight by 11 with it going the 11 direction. I didn't calculate how wide it would actually be. Um, I tend to start everything with the landscape orientation on my frame, but so that's, that's my start. Uh, I'm backstitching as I go. It's got a decent amount of backstitching. Um, and since it's little motifs, it's much saner to backstitch as I go. Um, there's some chronic, there's some fancy floss in this. There's beads, um, so it's gonna be a very cute little piece. And so on the 17th, this was my piece. It's Frederick the Literate. And last year I got basically these top five rows of color stitched in um and then this year i finished out i think i was to like there on the fifth row i finished out the fifth row i did the next row this one is a blended thread um so started in some blends again <laughs> and then started the first couple of books um just basically working until I ran out of the thread. Um, so it's trotting along. Um, it was several hundred stitches at, at the very least. Um, and then I had a second finish. Um, this one I started on the 21st and I finished it on the 21st. I would have finished this one in March, except there was a debate over some wording. And then when I had to rip out and was thinking I was going to be short on some of the specialty floss. So I ordered another skein and when it came in, I was glad I'd waited because it was a little bit off. It wasn't bad. It blends nicely. But if I had tried to stitch the old skein, I would have run out in the middle of the phrase. And I might have been able to tell. It was just a shade off in color. So I finished the sampler. I still have to finish pulling out my guidelines um, and 
obviously mount it, but let's see if we can get close enough. So it came with, we'll flip this down here, came with this Celtic phrase, Gaelic phrase. Um, means, I should have looked this up. Happiness is forever, something along those lines. Happiness is part of the phrase. And then my husband's Italian. I have English, Scottish ancestry and I've always loved my learning about and reading about my Scottish uh, history and heritage. Um, and so, you know, when I first saw the piece, that's what drew me to it was it's Celtic knots uh, in a wedding sampler. It just, you know, it, I love, I love it. Um, I mean, I have to kit them up and stitch them, but I have all the Celt lavender and lace Celtic ladies. Spring, summer, winter, fall, or I think it's autumn, um, and the Christmas one. So all five of them. So he had, this is charted to be the location of the wedding. And... He said, well, you know, I'm Italian. Can we put an Italian phrase? Sure. Give me something. And the phrase he gave me fit. It's roughly the same exact length as, as the Gaelic one. And I got it about halfway stitched and he looked over and... It said frittata, or almost said frittata. I think it was on the last set of double T's. And he used like scrambled eggs. I don't know how this has anything to do with marriage. So we did some research, we talked to people and ultimately determined it needed to be changed. That the full phrase had a whole nother word that's pretty much that long. So it was, you know, do I finish it and put the rest of the phrase where the date should be and then just like try to put the date somewhere? That didn't feel right. Um, so we looked for some other phrases and, and I ultimately went with this one. And so at the end of March, I was, when I was stitching the old Italian phrase about frittatas, I had this to finish and this, everything else was complete. And I was like, oh yay, I'm going to get it done by the end of March. Keep in mind, our date is April. I was like, yay, it'll be done in before the wedding. Nope. So uh, because of COVID, we were not able to have everyone we wanted at our wedding. Um, we did a very small family, immediate family only uh, celebration in his brother's and sister-in-law's backyard. They have, they host a lot of the family events because they have a very nice, well-developed outdoor dining and entertainment area in their backyard. And so we, we had 18, I think 18 family members, including us. Um, brought in some food from a local restaurant and had a great time. Um, you know, it was very lovely. My brother-in-law and husband built a, a simple arch 
for the little ceremony area and my sister-in-law decorated the heck out of the place. Um, it, was, it was very beautiful, very simple, very beautiful. Uh, various things that I'd already pulled together for the wedding venue that we originally picked um, were incorporated, but you know, not everything. Got a simple cake from the local deli bakery local grocery store bakery it was it was a yummy cake um whip topping frosting and i told them you know here's the kind of color scheme and they you know put some fruit on the top and it was it was a very lovely little cake and perfect perfect size for the gathering um uh, you know nice weather no rain not too hot, not too cold, not too windy. <laughs> um, but because of that, we have, are having a second one. And so, you know, I, I could have moved the date somewhere like over in here and then put our second vow renewal celebration date here as well. And I just decided that no, I wanted to, to keep the negative space up around the names the way it is that, you know, could get to looking too crowded and too, too crazy. But I liked his request of adding in a phrase. So we had to find a phrase that fit without losing the date. Um, and we did. So, you know, a little piece of him, a little piece of me. Um, and once it's completely set up and framed and it will be a lovely reminder of our special day, especially since the colors for the wedding have been pulled in fairly significant detail from, <laughs> from this piece. Um, the primary, the primary colors are a uh, forest emerald green with gold accents and some purples thrown in there to um, help accent it. So that was my second finish of the last two weeks. Uh, or as I've been informed, it's not an FO, it's an NCO, nearly completed object. I'd be surprised if that acronym took over the established acronyms. But there was a whole debate on it's not a finished object. It's not finished. It still has work to do. And I explained finished object versus fully finished object. And it was no, it's an NCO, nearly complete. Okay. On the 23rd, we had the anniversary for this piece. And I didn't have, I did not have a lot done on this piece. So this is actually the top corner. Um, I had done to about here in the black and some of the green but I really had only completed this top corner and so I went I spent two days on this. I worked on it on its birthday. And then the following day, I had some magical stitches goals that it worked for that I wanted to complete. So I, since the next day I didn't have anything that had a birthday, instead of doing a new start, I just put another day in this. Um, and I'm really happy. I mean, I'm about two thirds of the way 
to the bottom corner you faintly see there's there's the bottom corner so I'm about two-thirds of the way to the bottom corner and it's halfway done for this for this border piece the there's an the blue and olivey gold does its little repeat and then there's another little border that's like just an extra tiny bit of color i think a red or something along those lines um no you may not have the metal table and the needle minder decided it wanted to visit so my needle minder says does anybody have a map and this will eventually be a treasure map. Um, it's called Mysterious Adventure Project. And you start out, there's several different borders and you using dice or what have you, You roll a number to choose your your border. Then you, from there, you determine things. Now, I'm slightly insane. I took the whole piece of fabric and instead of stitching it over two, which would have made my map about a quarter of the size it's gonna be. I wanted a large map in a smallish space. <laughs> so I'm stitching it over one and hoping that there are no fractionals in any of the drop-in elements because I'm gonna to have to figure out how to do, deal with that when I'm stitching over one on 28 count. Uh, but that's for a very long time. There's one of the pieces that I've actually printed out. Printed out the pattern. So they called them locusts. There's seven. Seven locusts. So the first one is to figure out, you know, your map, your border. Um, so my border is this leafy one, but they have a rope. They have one called pennies. It's more of like a scallop. Um, Loka Zero was just, here's what kinds of threads. So like my threads, I picked them all myself. I, I had I had my stash, fairly, fairly decent stash of the DMC. It was not 100% complete, but it's, I'd say 75% complete. And so it till, said, you know, you need this many shades of a brown family. Here's the kinds of things they're going to be used for. And you also need a tan. You know, here's how many different blues. Um, plus you need a contrasting blue. Um, and so you, you go through and you, you know, put together your color, color chart. So you're picking, you know, it's, it's, you need so many greens and I put greens together and, you know, a dark, a medium, a light and a very contrasty color. So I went very emerald type of green from really dark to medium 
than almost leaf green. But then for my contrasting green, I did an olive green. So it's, it's very contrasting and it, it actually looks almost gold mixed with the greens in the border. Um, so Locos one is, Locos zero is pick your threads and your fabric. Locos one is roll some dice, figure out your border, um, and stitch it. Locos two is figuring out your coastline, your division between land and water. And they have a whole flow chart. You know, roll this number, do this. Um, then three is figuring out the where of your map's name, the you know placement of where your map name is going to be, as well as then figuring out a name for it, you know, along with an alphabet and some crests. And they give you all kinds of different ideas for title blocks. And Locus 4 is looks like your it's called wayfinding so your I can show this so it's your you know every map has a a symbol to say this is north um, along with different types of ends um, locus five is how do you take your section of water and break it up to figure out where you're going to put your your pieces of water design in. Um, then Locus 6 is all those water pieces, you know, various islands, uh, lighthouses, ships with flags. Um, then smaller things, you know, birds and junk boats and mermaids and sea monsters, and all of that. Locus 7 is do the same thing, but we're going to do land. So it's got birds and castles and our very favorite X marks the spot and a pirate's shield, um, houses. All of that kind of stuff so that when you get done you have your own unique map it's got things that you like it's your colors you know your own design colors um, and it's you know if you want it's a pirate treasure map uh, so it's it's another one that's going to take me forever uh, because, you know, I haven't even gotten one of the border sides then and the short one at that. Uh, so I'm going to be on that phone one for a very long time, but it's, it's nice to pull out every so often and Eventually, the pirate room will have a, a pirate map. Okay, then on the 25th, I, if you'll remember from video one, this piece I had on a different piece of fabric and it was a piece of Hardanger specialty dyed a hard anger. And then I got into the piece and discovered it's got a million and one fractionals and was just getting really frustrated with it. So I dyed a piece of 28 count Monaco and got a fairly similar effect to the piece that of hard anger that I really liked it on. And so this year I restarted it on the new piece of fabric and 
unlike last year where I stitched about that much of the horn two or three different times trying to figure out a way to tolerate fractionals on hard anger. This time I got a good chunk of him done. Um, we've got the corner of the book starting, one whole horn, well actually almost two horns are done, and we're working on getting into his face. So he's coming along. Here's the piece from last year. Yeah. Horn attempt, horn attempt number one, horn attempt number two. I just wasn't happy with it, no matter how much I tried. And it's, color-wise, it's a very simple piece. There's four colors. Blue, black, yellow, and orange. Then we have... The other activities and projects that have been keeping me busy, um, and that is I made some project bags. Uh, this one's just a general, it's going to hold all of my various, and this is only a few of them I have to go dig, but particularly for Jolly July, I think I'm going to work on Mill Hill kits that I've collected. I know I've collected quite a few Christmassy ones and so work on the Mill Hill kit. So I, I made one that's just a general, but it's, you know, got all my favorite colors in it. Um, so it's got a seaweed lining in purples and greens and then a peacock feather back in, you know, blues and green and gold. And I really love how this came out. Um, and I have, I have some more, I got several yards. So I'm gonna have to make, make up a few different size bags. So, I made that one. On this one, I'll tip the, the zipper down, but I can't show you what's inside because I have a pen pal and I thought that it would be cool to make a bag just to hold the various projects as as I see a project that I think would be really cute to make for her I'll grab the pattern and or smaller pieces of fabric because we we tend to keep the the stitch is to roughly a 50 by 50 ish size. Um, and so I can do the projects often on much smaller pieces of fabric. So this is where I collect the ornament size scraps of fabric, if you will. So like, my wedding piece, when I get done figuring out, you know, how much extra I want on the bottom for framing, um, I'll be able to cut off a significant chunk. This would e make either one heck of a bookmark because it's, you know, 20 odd inches wide, 18, something like that. Or 50 by 50 stitches, I could probably get three out of this. Um, so, you know, pieces that are little small designs, I stick all the, all the small pieces of fabric into my bag. And I had just been collecting them in like a Ziploc baggie. So, the front is these birds with it's right there. Birds with little cherries and a navy polka dot. And the back is Grateful Dead skeletons with tie-dye. And I don't know why. 
but I saw it and I thought it would make a great personalized uh, project bag to collect the various little projects that I'm making for her. And then for my tropical treasures, I made a large, and I have to dig it out, but, and double check that it actually will fit. It should, I measured it and gave myself extra room. Um, but that one lives on an 11 by 17 frame. So I made this one big enough for an 11 by 17 Q-snap. Um, so we've got the jellyfish in the front, or yeah, in the front, and we've got dolphins in the back. Um, and we'll see how much of that project fits in here because I'm hoping if my math is correct that a significant chunk of it will fit in there if not all of it. Um, it's got a 130 colors on project cards, something like that. There's a lot of cards. Uh, and then this is my Memorial Day new start. Um, and so that's going to take me a while to stitch. So I figured it needed its bag and I have enough random patriotic pieces that even once it's done, I can just collect them in this bag and then they'll all be in a personalized bag. So it says, uh, stars and stripes, we the people, land of the free. There's all kinds of symbolism from the founding of our country on this fabric. And then the back, has eagles and flags and most of my patriotic pieces have something to do with an eagle or with the flag um, and so it's a it's a bag that will be used much in the coming days and then I have a handful more cut out. I just need to finish um, sewing them together. Uh, zippers are installed. It's to the binding binding phase and I kind of bunched them all together by color of stitching thread. The last thing we're going to go over and then I will do a little bit of life update is I have some haul. So I'm part of the Fortnite Fabrics uh, Fabric of the Month. I get two of their fabrics. I get their uh, what is this one? I forget what the what the club name is called. Something along the lines of like fancy or sparkly or it's on opal fabric, opalescent. So May's is doll hairs and I should have taken them out of the bag, but I didn't. Let me get, get this out. So this is 32, 32 count even weave doll hair and it's a gorgeous like almost seafoam green it's looking very bluish and it's really very green um a nice green ocean color is what i see here Hard 
the tip. The lights straighten my face. Well, almost. Just enough for me to not really be able to see clearly, which is why I have an optometrist appointment. Because, yeah, that and my glasses got chipped yesterday. I don't, I don't remember how they fell, but they fell. And yeah, I could get a new set of glasses. Not a big deal, except that this prescription's two years old. My last prescription, there was a teensy tiny change. She was like, yeah, you can still use your old, old prescription. You don't have to, you know, difference isn't enough. And it's like, well, it's now been another year. Bet there's been another change. So since I need new glasses, let's find out what the prescription is before I pay the money for new glasses. So my other fabric of the month from Fortnite Fabrics is their Duos Club. And that one I get on 36 regular linen. And this month is called Bonnie and Clyde. And this is a gorgeous. So there was subtle modeling on the luxurious, this one's got crazy modeling. It's generally two complementary or opposing colors that they pick, one for each of the characters. I mean, and that's doing a pretty kick-ass job in picking up the color. It's gorgeous and I really enjoy their, their fabrics. They're very lovely. And then I was enabled. So my nephew, I'm making, this is my June project. I have a giant giant it's like 36 inches by 24 or something along the lines of that push pin board for his room and I'm gonna make basically bunting so triangles with his initials and I sent him screenshots of a bunch of or I showed him screenshots of a bunch of alphabets um, but they're themed alphabets and a lot of them are more a little kidsy. He picked one that's Asian inspired, um, specifically Japan inspired. So it's got um, the white egret, I think it is, or I don't think it's a stork. I think it's an egret, um, paper cranes. Uh, so they have a block letter and then they have an image that's um, reminiscent of Japan and their, the things that make you think of Japan. So one of the letters I think has a little temple shape, um, various birds, various flowers. Um, you know, they have the cherry blossom, I think it is. And so I'm going to do on like a triangle shape, the symbol or the, in each of his, the letters for his name on individual triangles. Um, so that, you know, include for his full name, but also then, um, throw in the letter so that he can actually make it be just his nickname because um, there's a name change and I asked him what colors he liked and he's on a big red and black kick right now so I got a bunch of DMC 115 which is heavy variegated red um, I have a massive 
I'm out. I have a cone of, of DMC 310. Um, but because this is impossible to find in locally, I got like a dozen, 10 or so, something along those lines. Um, and then my being enabled. I saw somebody had done as more or less a bell pull. They done it along a long strand. The Lizzie Kate less is more. So fear less, hope more. Talk less, say more. Hate less, love more. Line less, breathe more. Um, I just, when I saw it, I was like, that's perfect. Um, while I was at it, I got a pair of ping, a pair of pilgrims, also a Lizzie Kate. of fancy flosses. And let freedom ring. And I was searching for something else and found this on eBay. I think it was eBay, it might have been Etsy. It's an impossible to find, is what it is. Or not impossible because I found it, but it's not in like one, two, three stitch or any of the main stitch groups. Um I couldn't find a hundred, you know, find much information on it, but it was copyrighted in 96. So, um, we'll see if there's, there's supposed to be, this says the first in the series and I was looking for a different one of these. Um, and when I put in the designer's name, that's this is the one that came up. Then I also got something I've been looking for for a while, which is some kind of genealogy related sampler. And this one is. So I suspect that'll end up being like an anniversary stitch and you know put my name and my family information on one side and my husband's family information on the other um, and then last but not least, certainly not least this was the mail today i got the two nor corbert Corbett releases. These just came out. I'm not huge on, like, huge on Halloween, but I could see those being up for Halloween, you know, being up all year round, but also being up for Halloween. And I got the embellishment packs with them. It's, I mean, 
These are very simple looking pieces, especially considered compared to like a Mirabilia. It's a little larger than an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper for decent size symbols. There's three different kinds of beads. DMC 310. Two, two skeins of that. And then Karen Water Lilies 196 and some Krynic braid. And the Krynic's only backstitch. Um, don't know if I'll get to them this year, but they're really, they're really cool looking and probably a fairly quick stitch. I would say that they're, it looks like it's on par with say a larger Mill Hill kit. Um, I have one of those that, you know, see how long that takes me. But the small, the regular Mill Hill kits take me less than a week if I sit down and just do that. Um, I mean, when you're dealing with nothing but full, full stitches, it goes pretty fast. Um, and you know, for the mill help, the hardest part is doing all the sorting. Um, I would sit down and with my bead mat and sort my beads into individual numbered containers and sort out my threads and onto a project card. And, you know, there's an hour or so. Um, depending on how many beads there are. I've had a couple of mill hills that had three packages of mixed of the beads mixed together. So there, there were enough colors close enough that they separated it into three packages, but then they still had like three or four colors in each bag. And, um, you know, those have taken me a little longer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, It's really quite uh, straightforward looking. You know. And I can could really see them being a Halloween start, or not, not even a start, but like a, a Halloween piece that goes up. I think Claire might be my favorite of the two. We'll see. She kind of reminds me a little bit of a mix between I guess I'm getting a bit of a Maleficent. Those kind of look like, you know, I know they're not. It's a headpiece of some kind. But it just, it is really giving me that Maleficent vibe. And I don't have a problem with that. Uh, so I will insert at the end a picture. My sister recently got her own, bought her own home. Um, she had her own place for a long time. Um, but she was able to buy her own home recently and moved her in. And one of the things that she really wanted in as part of the homeowner search, home search was she wanted a place she could have some chickens. And so when she finally 
successful, you know, got, had a successful offer on a house. Um, the market out here is intense and insane. Um, she put in offers on multiple properties where there was ended up being something in the neighborhood of 30 or more offers. Um, and sometimes she was rejected on the type of, you know, if, if you got feedback, that was a big if. Um, but, you know, sometimes it was the type of loan she had or, you know, the, the fastest way to get a place, which is difficult for, for some people, was to have a cash offer. You had a cash offer with no strings, your offer could be would be accepted faster than even if you offered more, but had had to go through the whole lending process. Um, the market was just was and is that crazy, and places were selling well over list, so you really couldn't even go off of the list. Um, you were talking 10 to 20 percent more than the list price um, so she finally had a home you know an offer that was accepted jumped through all the fun hurdles to actually get the keys in her hand um, and not all the hurdles were on her end. There were a few hurdles that were actually the seller's end. Um, things that they had to resolve to be able to finalize the sale. But she got her keys, got moved in at the beginning of the month. And I had done some research once once she had put in the offer and it was accepted. I'd, I'd done some research on places that had Dale chicks. Um, we had chickens growing up. Um, so I was aware of that, you know, you can buy them as Dale chicks, they can get mailed to you. And I found a, a small family run farm that raises uh, chickens for laying hens um, and sells them as Dale chicks. And it was an hour and a half away from us. Um, so talked to her and talked to them, figured out, you know, when she would be ready. And we went and picked up the chickens yesterday. The dog was semi, we, we knew he would be unnerved by them. Um, tried to do some desensitization uh, by playing some short bits of YouTube chicks chirping videos. And I think more because he quickly figured out it was a video, he just could have cared less. Like his ears would perk up and then he'd look around and then his head would go back down. He'd go back to sleep. So we ha now have these living things. And of course my nephew is enthralled with them and ignoring him. I swear it was like the reaction of the first child when the baby sibling comes home from delivery. Jealousy city. Anyway. introduced them. He has become Mr. Protective. I was over there today and took a look and while I was looking one of them knocked over their little water dish. So I reached in to get the water dish to go get them some more water. He shoved my hand out of the box. It's, it's the funniest thing because 
you know, he'll go back over to his bed and he'll be, especially if they're all sleeping, go back over to his bed and, and he'll lay down. But the more they chirp, the more he is hanging out near them, looking. Um, my sisters had to tell him he's not allowed to clean them because he, he really, he really wants to mother hen them and, you know, clean their feathers. But, you know, he's a German shepherd. They're two day old chicks that fit in the palm of your hand. One swipe of his tongue and they're falling over. <laughs> his tongue's as big as them. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's the cutest thing seeing him become little Mr. Mom with them. Um, and based on his behavior with small dogs, I suspected that he would do that. But it's just been, it's been really cute seeing him become Mr. Protective over the baby chicks. And so I'll insert a picture of, of the chickens with the dog looking over them. Uh, so that's, that's the new adventure in the saga of the family. And somehow in bringing them home, my glasses, I had my sunglasses on at the time and my regular glasses were like in my neck neckline. I don't know. Maybe I bent over and they, I don't even remember anymore. I just know that I put them on a little bit later and was like, there's something funny. Oh, there's a piece of the glass missing. Um, it's an, it's an annoying little distraction at the bottom of my glasses, uh, for seeing it doesn't affect the glasses of you know, ability, my ability to do my job. Um, but it is, it is slightly annoying. So the, uh, optometry appointment is next month and then we'll get the glasses fixed. I can't think of anything else to share with you today. So we'll just call this a wrap and I'll, get to editing and putting this into a final format. See you soon.